So, my mom always tells me I'm born on a Sunday. And I thought I was born on a Tuesday, so I was like, what's this about? And she's like, no, 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 it's a metaphor. It means that you're born really lucky. And my sister, she overheard this conversation and she was like, well, if Avery is born on a Sunday, then I'm probably born on a Monday morning. But I think my mom's right. I feel pretty lucky. I mean, I was born in the Netherlands. I have a loving family. I have amazing friends. I have a roof above my head. And still, despite of this, a few years ago, I got really, really scared. And it didn't just happen. It started when I was nine years old in school. And I had to draw global warming. That was the first time I even heard about it. I draw the earth, the sun, the atmosphere, CO2. And in the years that followed, I'm 23 years old now, I learned more and more about this issue. I read articles, I read a lot of books, I love spending time in the library. I'm that kind of person. Um, I watched a lot of documentaries, which made me cry as well. And the more I heard about it, the more hopeless I became. I had this feeling of hopelessness and fear. And I noticed, and I noticed now, I didn't notice this then, but that I'm not the only one feeling this, afraid of climate change. And I got scared, and I got scared because when we were younger, me and my parents used to drive to Italy with the car, and then our front window would be filled with little flies, little insects, maybe you remember this. And now, if we go out for a drive, there's almost no insects left. And it's not because the insects have learned how to avoid cars. It's because 75% of the insects are now gone. And I got really scared because I learned that in the last 60 years, more than 50% of the wildlife has disappeared. And this means that in books that my mother read to me when I was younger, there are animals that will no longer exist when I have children myself. And I have conversations with my friends if I even want to have children. I do really want to be a mom, but do I want to put children on a planet that's, you know, not doing so great? Well, the way I've seen it, the more you get informed about what's going on with the planet and the climate, um, people respond in different ways. So we have the flight, the fight, and the freeze reactions. Maybe you've heard about this. And I noticed that if you inform people about what's going on, they have the same reactions. And the fighting one, the first one, means that we start fighting what's happening. These are the people kicking in McDonald's windows during marches, and I've never done this myself, don't worry. Uh, but that's a reaction we see. Then we see the flight reaction, people that pretend it's not there. They know what's happening, but it's, the problem is just so big, so they'll be like, no. And then we have the freeze reaction, and this is the reaction that I had to climate change. And it means that the problem is so overwhelming, you get stuck in fear and you don't know what to do about it. I mean, I'm only one person, what can I do about it? Can I even do something about it? Now, I decided to change my perspective from fear to hope. I decided to change my perspective from fighting the systems that don't work anymore and be angry about it, to lighting candles. Stop cursing the darkness, start lighting candles. And this, for me, has not only been an amazing transformation on how I look at the climate crisis, but also how I look at life in general. Now, it's very difficult to stay optimistic. And uh, like I got in the introduction, I'm the new youth representative on sustainable development. And this means that I'm like in the midst of all of this. I hear a lot about climate change. I've talked to a lot of scientists. And last December, I had the honor to go to Poland to the climate summit of the United Nations, and I don't know if anyone heard anything about it, but I was there. It's a lot of talking. It's very political. Um, and I gave a speech about why I was still hopeful in this whole situation, and this young girl came up to me, and she was like, thank you so much. Thank you so much for staying hopeful, because I'm surrounded with people who are just, they think our future is ruined, and they, they just think that we, don't, we can't do anything about it anymore. So my message of hope, was actually me lighting her candle, and then she spread it to her friends. But I can imagine why she asked me this question, and I get it often, I get it a lot, because I was actually at the same climate summit watching a presentation of a few scientists, and one of the guys, he just 
he took off his glasses and he got really emotional and he just looked at us and he was like, we should all prepare ourselves for the end of the world. I mean, come on, right? It's difficult enough to stay hopeful. And I was just sitting in the room like, there's still a lot left worth fighting for. So our generation, what I noticed is that we are being mocked very often for our sensitivity. And I told you that I cry if I see a documentary that shows wills uh, on beaches with stomachs full of plastic. I cry about it. It means I care. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm, I mean, I can say it here, right? But we're often mocked for the sensitivity, and it's the lack of sensitivity that actually got us into this mess in the first place. I don't think our generations are snowflakes or soft. I think it's the bravest thing you can actually do to show that we care about what's happening in the world. And when something would happen when I was younger, people would often say, no, this is what happened in the real world. I mean, I don't know if there's a fake one, but it's just one world, right? <laughs> now, our generation, uh, I feel, is somehow disconnected to nature, more than our parents and their parents, maybe. We look at screens a lot. We all have our phones and tablets and laptops and TV screens. And, you know, you know, do you know the names of the trees when you look outside of the window? When you hear a bird, do you know what kind of bird it is? I mean, I don't. So, even though we are a little bit more disconnected, we are this force of creativity and innovation. I love spending time with young people and talking to them because we are actually uh, looking at things from a different perspective. And that's exactly the thing we need right now because I've, I saw it before, uh, the Einstein quote, you know, you cannot solve a problem by looking at it by the same way you did when you created this problem. And the younger generation is actually the opportunity to let us look at things from a different perspective and help us create solutions for the biggest problems we face today in the world. And also, we all know that plants grow better in sunlight, right, than in artificial light. Children do too, so why do we put them in classrooms all day? Why do we teach them about history and not about the fast-changing future that's lying ahead of them? Well. To give an example of the creativity of young people, I just want to tell you about a study that I did, um, my thesis. It was about the future of education. I'm very passionate to talk about education. And I did a very simple thing. I asked the children one question, and it was, what is it you've always wanted to know? And I just left sticky notes and pens, and I left. And when I came back, they wrote down the most amazing answers. Um, they wrote down, do aliens exist? I got aliens a lot that day. Um, why do people hate cats? Was an answer. Um, where, will, where will we move to when the sun explodes? Does nature have feelings? What is life? Was an answer. I mean, these are just examples of the creativity of our younger generation. And we should cherish it and use it to help us forward. Now, if you paid attention, if you watched the news, you might have seen that worldwide there's this movement going on of young people standing up for themselves, standing up for their future, standing up for their right for a livable and healthy planet. There's climate marches going on everywhere in the world. People are going on school strikes. I mean, I'm joining them, of course. But there's something happening. I truly believe that we're here for the revolution, and we need every generation to join us in this. You can't just say, well, it's up to the young people. I'm already old. I mean, it's not my problem anymore. Probably be here for another 30, 40 years. No. So climate change is not just a problem. It's also an opportunity. Because it doesn't know boundaries. It doesn't stop at the border of Belgium and be like, oh, no, no, guys, guys, hold on. You know, we're only here for the Netherlands. Climate change affects everyone and everything living on this planet, so we need everyone and everything involved in the solution. And that's a big opportunity, because for the first time in the history of mankind, we can all work together. Generations, cultures, countries, and I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. Now, I often tell people that I feel everything is connected. And the best way to explain how I mean this, I mean, a lot of people say, like, oh, you're so hippie. And I'm like, oh, okay, thank you, because I don't mind being called a hippie. But the best way to explain this is 
I always remember walking around in the Natural History Museum in Vienna, and there was this cabin that showcased the materials uh, humans are made of. And we all know blood, bones, flesh, water. There were also stones in this cabin, and I was like, stones? Made of stones? And I looked at it, and it, was, it said that humans are made of 0.000014% titanium and 0.00013% gold. It's in our bodies. It's amazing, right? I thought it was amazing. And unfortunately, recently we could ask, add microplastics to this list because they found microplastics in human waste. And about the interconnectedness, it makes sense because if plastic ends up in the river, it ends up in the ocean, and the fish eat it, and we eat the fish, it ends up in our own bodies. So harming nature actually means harming ourselves. And I think we kind of lost track of this. And if you throw something away, do you think it really goes away? Or do you just move it? If I throw away my phone, maybe it will end up in the e-waste uh, dump in Ghana, in Africa. It's just out of my sight. It's like your mom asking you to clean your room and you just move it from your desk to under your bed so you don't see it anymore, you know? So think about it. Is there really a, a way? Now, I would like to say to you that you're never too young or too old to make a difference. And this movement is happening and you can either choose to contribute to the problems or become part of the solution. And the question I get often, I got it while I was in Poland as well, uh, was do you think there's one big solution for this problem? One big solution, name one. I had to think about it and I was like, well, no, I don't think there is. I think everyone has something within them that the world needs. And if you find that and you use it, then we all have very little solutions and they can become part of the one big solution. That's the way I see it. So, you know, how lucky am I actually by being born in this time during these challenges we face today? I feel I'm pretty lucky. I mean, I'm here now so I can do something about it. It's my opportunity. I actually feel so lucky that I sometimes overflow and I want to give it to other people. And I'm actually crazy enough to think I can do something about it, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Now, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a politician, I'm just a young girl standing here talking to you. And we as humans have so much impact on the planet that used to give me a lot of anxiety and fear. But now it gives me hope. Because it means that we can also choose to actually protect the environment and everything that lives on this planet. I think we're at this crossroad in the history of humankind. Whether we choose to contribute to the problems or become part of the solution. And it's not the size of the problem that decides if there's a solution for it. It's our attitude to it's the problem. No matter if it's big or small. When you look at something, do you see a solution? An opportunity? You see, I believe this brave new world is possible. And that if we're really quiet, we can hear our heart beating. Thank you very much. Thank you.